In a previous video, we looked at this tiered VNet design with Azure Virtual WAN, wherein to get to these indirect spoke VNets down the bottom here, we used either static routing or BGP to point traffic to either an NVA or an Azure Firewall in this VNet here that's directly attached to the Virtual WAN hub. Now, when you do that, generally speaking, you have your NVA or Azure Firewall in the blue box here, and then you route traffic onwards to these indirect spokes. But sometimes you also have other virtual machines inside of that same blue VNet, perhaps Jumpbox, for example, sitting next to your NVA. One of the things that you might have noticed when working with Virtual WAN and this topology is that if I go from one of these virtual machines outside of the blue box here, in my case, hanging off a hub in a different region, you come across these virtual WAN hubs, remember they're non-secured regular virtual WAN hubs, you might expect to be able to talk directly to this virtual machine here, the jump box, without going through the NVA. In a normal design based on customer managed hub and spoke VNets, you would learn the entire blue address space and that would be the more specific route. But what I want to talk about in this video is how that behavior isn't the default and the new feature that we've got to change that if you need it. So in my current topology, if we look at this static route here I've got configured, so 172.16.96 slash 20, I'm pointing all traffic destined for that range at this IP address here, 101.200, which is my NVA inside of my blue directly connected spoke. And I'm doing that because I want to attract all traffic to all of these indirect spoke VNets that I've got attached here, which fall under this supernet of the slash 20 range. What's also quite common with this design pattern is that the blue box as well will also fall under that slash 20 supernet, which is the case in my topology here. You see this range here, 172.16.101, is also part of that block, just as are the green VNets that I've got hanging off here. What we see is by implementing this configuration, Virtual WAN will send everything to this NVA, even if the virtual machines reside in the same blue box here. And we can verify that because at the moment, my NVA is blocking all traffic. If I jump on this virtual machine over here and try and connect to 101.4, we see that ping is currently failing. Now in the past, there has been workarounds available where for every single virtual machine that you need access to, you insert another static route, a slash 32 route, which looks rather strange. It would say 172.16.101.4 as the match condition, and the next hop would also be 101.4. So very confusing and pretty unscalable if you have a lot of these singular virtual machines inside the blue box that you don't want to be filtered by the NVA. If I jump in now and inspect that VNet connection object, and of course VNet connection is just another name for peering a spoke VNet to a virtual WAN hub, we can see we've got some things here that represent our diagram, such as we have that static route I talked about with the next top of my NVA. Everything's inside of the default route table in terms of propagation and association. But down here, we've got an additional setting, which is what I want to talk about in this video, which is called bypass next hop IP. You see at the moment for my VNet connection, this is set to no, and this is the default and represents the behavior that I described wherein traffic going to my jump box would be forced via the NVA, even though you might not expect it and might not want it. Let's now observe the change that this toggle allows First thing to be aware is to change this toggle, you have to reset up the VNet connection. You can't do this on the fly. So let me go and do that. Okay, and we are back. So we've got the same lab configuration. I've re-added my VNet connection here. We can see it's got the same config, the same static route pointing to the same next hop IP. We can see that this bypass next hop IP for workloads within this VNet is now set to yes. Notice that the tooltip also gives you a little bit of an overview as to what this does when you tick yes. So exactly the same topology as before. 
if I try and ping from my VM over here, hanging off the north central US region to my jump box here, 172.16.101.4, remember before that was failing because it was being pushed through the NVA, which is blocking all traffic. Now with the setting, which effectively allows direct access to the VNet address spaces in this range, if you do not have a static route that matches them exactly, so normal Azure platform behavior, we would now expect this to be working directly, which it is, so that traffic is coming across VWAN hub to hub, down the VNet connection, and going straight to the VM, and traffic going back. Okay, I hope you found that video useful. I'll drop some links in the chat regarding the official documentation, and I'll catch you in the next one.